What did matter to HMV was that he made more records for them. And less than a decade after his voice broke, my father returned to the microphone as a baritone. Love, could I only tell thee how dear thou art to me? Surely my heart devotion say how I worship thee. The height of stars above thee, the deepness of the sea. But as the height and the deepness of my heart's love for thee, love could I only tell. Recently married to his childhood sweetheart and sometime accompanist, my father entered the war as part of the home defences. Fatefully, it took him back to the temple church, but not as a singer. I was in the fire service during the war, mm. and one of the jobs we were on was the St Paul's Cathedral back of it, which was blitzed badly and well alight. And while we were there, the officer came along and said, right, make up your lot and get back down to the temple. And we came down here, to back up the team, and the place was a light. The whole church was a light, all this was a light, all that. And we, with our little appliance, was trying to do something about it, you see. And there's no water, because the hydrants were all down, all blitzed. And they said, well, try and get some water from the Thames. And of course, the time we got down the Thames, the tide was out, so there was no water there. We really had to stand here and watch it burn. This so is you coming back to save the church that you've been singing in yeah. for the previous yeah. 20 years. And to watch Gosh. it burn was terrible. Oh. The temple church and the adjacent inner temple hall were badly damaged by incendiary bombs and for a while the 800 year history of the church, together with its musical tradition, appeared to have come to an end. While the bombs continued to fall, the legendary documentary filmmaker Humphrey Jennings was at work on his series of films about the war effort. Crown Film Unit made documentary films. They decided to make one of the fire service during the Blitz period. And they selected Harrow, where I was stationed, for the crew, the machines, and the officers. I was selected to be the officer in charge of the control room. And we had to go to Pinewood for the film. And it was in, in this vast studio, but there was a little tiny section which was the fire service control room. Control? Right. Fire at Dock Street, sir. Send a TP from V, a TP from W, we send a heavy and a TP from X. Order a trailer pack. And a TP from Z. Get Trinidad district of supplies to go on, will you? Order one TP to Trinidad. Control here. Order your heavy units and trailer pack to Trinidad Street. Back in the real war, my father found that fighting fires occasionally produced some curious surprises. I was with the appliance sent on a job at Elephant Castle. When we got there, we found it was a record factory with all the records stored in. So we went in with our hoses, and the first record I picked up was that, which you can see if you can very carefully. But it's Hear my prayer. Hear my prayer. And that was lying on the floor, burning as you yeah. went in to save yeah. the building. So we the rescued building. it, thinking we'd be a memento of some kind, but. Uh, Thank we all our gods on the other side. That's another <laughs> record in the middle there. Another record's got glued to it. Oh, so there wonderful. it is, and I've kept it. In spite of the terrible damage to the temple and the evacuation of the choir boys, my father, now one of the gentlemen of the choir, continued to sing in the Sunday services which were held in the bombed-out ruins of the church.
For the coronation of Elizabeth II in 1953, the choirs of Westminster Abbey, St. Paul's, the Temple, and the Chapel Royal were combined, and it brought together my father and my older brother Peter, a chorister at the Chapel Royal St. James's. Returning to Westminster Abbey 40 years later brings back some vivid memories of that historic day. Now we must have been somewhere around here. We were around here, weren't we? The choirs were all, all up there. The orchestra was on the top oh, yeah. of that screen. Do you remember? We were right at the top there. Those arches, we were... I could touch those arches each side. Yeah, and all, all that. The oh, whole area was the choir, wasn't it? Because Sir William Mackay was up there, wasn't he, conducting? Yes. And um, we couldn't see his beat up the top there, so we had a second hand from Eddie Wright, who was just, just above here. And they had the same this side, so it came from Sir William Mackay to Eddie Wright to us. Could you see any of the coronation from the back where you were? Well, only between two pillars, which was just the bit of the coronation chair. But you weren't supposed to be looking at the coronation. Remember them telling us we I were here? I couldn't look anywhere else. Not as spectators, but to, uh, to perform. Work was well underway on the rebuilding of the Temple Church by the appropriately named Dove Brothers, and with the reopening of part of the church in 1954, George Thorburn Ball set about assembling a new choir with the reintroduction of boys. I was the youngest member of that new choir, and I think I knew even then that I had a hard act to follow. Uh, I used to stand here, um, and my father, who was by then a baritone, stood directly behind me, and Dr. George Thorburn Ball, uh, was still the organist and choir master when I was a soloist. Uh, but I never sang any of the solos that my father sang, which I think was probably a good thing because uh, there was no comparison. I used to sing like any other choir boy, um, but he was something special. There was one duet that I sang that he also sang. I Waited for the Lord, which I sang with a boy called Ian Legrice, and my father had recorded with Ron Mallett. And it's the only example there is of the two voices singing the same thing. The remarkable thing about these two recordings, made 30 years apart, is that the organist and choirmaster is the same on both. George Thorburn Ball took over the Temple Choir when he was still only 28, and for many years he was regarded as the finest organist in the world. Knighted in 1982, he was not only the organist and choirmaster of the Temple Church for nearly 60 years, but was also the city organist here in Birmingham.